It was just always around, you know, and the living room was like the center of where I was growing up. And there you had music, records all over the place, and there was always some music. It was, from a very early age, something that was just part of my world. I couldn't think of it. It was a natural, just, it's, it's one. I know you did from the moment on she was born, I guess, because my father and her father, they run a, a business together, actually. We were connected in a way that they would run parties at their place on weekends and you'd show up there. But then later on, I was babysitting her, like, I, I guess I was 16, and it was right above the art school I did, and so I would sleep there when I babysit. Most of the times her father would show up at two in the morning with some jazz musicians from the club he was hanging out at and he would switch on the lights, I was already sleeping. Cut! Wake up! <laughs> and so he was making gimlet vodkas and we would smoke and listen and he would always bring along some crazy people <laughs> from the scene. cute little girl. <laughs> she would put on the high heels of her mom and she would whip out the record of Stevie Wonder and sing along. <laughs> like I'm, I always was sure she's going to be a singer. And she loved to dance. She loved to listen to music. And I prepared a, a program for the radio. She would always sit around and check me out. But I was so concentrated to listen to the music that I didn't pay attention to her. So she was all, there was always music. And her daddy was rehearsing and listening and, and then there were people coming and we would listen to records all night long. Listen how this drummer is doing the beats and how, I mean, the very specific listening to music, to listen to each instrument, what it's playing, what they do together, which harmonies and so on. All that, that was a big part of our life. As a young teenager, I was uh, checking out Yo! MTV Raps as often as I could. We would record the whole shows onto a tape recorder, like from the TV, so we could get certain versions of the songs that you couldn't get on the LPs. Yeah, and then I discovered through that that you can actually buy 12 inches at the record store. When I did the mixtapes, it was just to have my perfect mix to listen um, on my Walkman. Walkman! <laughs> well, Mark Zuki173 is just one of the most lovely spirits I met along the way. We're on the same frequency and we're like brothers and sisters. We met us at a party, I think. We DJed some friends and um, all the girl came and said, hey, I have to show you somebody, uh, Judith. She's wicked in DJing, you have to know her. Judith is a really honest and deep digger too. So 
What she did is quality stuff. When you listen to a, a mixtape she makes, it's so interesting and it represents, I don't know, like the last 30 or 40 years with, with this soul and with this African vibe. It's like warrior's music. For me, Judith is a warrior. She always liked to bust her. I like to bust her. You know what that means? <laughs> to do some hand craft things, like sew things and draw. I just wanted to have a John Coltrane sweatshirt. I had found these few fabrics and I found like, okay, I want to take the classic image of him on the Love Supreme record and do a sweatshirt. Dance and music, art are super important elements of most of the cultures because it makes you stop thinking and it makes you create. There we would actually be the happiest. I love to get inspired by the images but also by the philosophies. I find it interesting to find the common sense of all these cultures and of all these things that people were fascinated by. It's about the moments where you surprise yourself maybe with a mix, you risk, you maybe just mess it up, you know, but you take the risk and then you you suddenly bring that emotion out of a moment that was maybe quite more like rolling and you know you have your eyes closed and then suddenly you make these little sparkles out there. So that far you take risks and I it's not it's boring to be perfect. Actually, this is the only valley in Switzerland I know. So don't get the wrong picture of Heidi, sassy Heidi. But, um, you know, let's break it down. It's simply beautiful to be here. The whole crew is happy, Jay is happy, the trees are happy, stones, the mountains. That's what we want in life, right? We want to feel good. And places like this just give you that immediately and you can actually let all the bad stuff just throw in it into the river and Ooh la la, c'est la vie, c'est pépé les jours, les amis. We have to do that. <laughs>